In this video, we're going to talk about the Pope's recent comments that were kind of shocking. They suggested that they're all paths lead to God. In fact, specifically said that all religions are paths to arrive at God. We're going to unpack what that means within the context of when he was discussing it. We'll also see there were some follow-up comments that he made the next day that sort of doubled down on what he said originally. And then also, we're going to look at Catholic theology. What, what is the Catholic view of justification? As a Protestant myself, I'm learning these things, and I, I care about not only how we as Protestants represent the religion, but also how Catholics represent the religion, because on justification, there are minor differences, but at least we should all agree that the path to salvation goes through Jesus. It, it must go through Jesus. But the Pope's comments seem to suggest otherwise, so let's get into that. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the video where he actually made the comments, and I'll go ahead and stop and start occasionally to make a few comments of my own. Una delle cose che più mi ha colpito di voi giovani, di questi qui, no? È la capacità del dialogo interreligioso. One of the things that struck me about all of you here is your ability to engage in interreligious dialogue. And this is very important. So the context of his comments are interreligious dialogue, having a bunch of faiths talking to each other. And so he's very much wanting to encourage these young people to engage in this sort of healthy discussion whereby we can find common ground and, you know, just even discuss our differences, but do so in a respectful, reasonable way. Perché se voi incominciate a litigare, la mia religione è più importante della tua, la mia è la vera, la tua non è vera, dove ci porta questo? Because if we start to fight amongst ourselves and saying, my religion is more important than yours, my religion is true, yours is not, where will that lead us? Dove? Where will it lead us? Okay, so where will it lead us? Now, it's a very different thing to fight amongst each other and say, my religion is better than yours. But it's, a, it's different than saying, my religion is the one true religion and yours is not. Now, he's saying, don't say that. What, where does that lead? And you'll see what the children, or the kids say. But... It's important to note that this is very different. There's truth, and then there's like how important a religion is. Now, the truer religion or the one true religion may also be very important, but you don't typically want to talk about when you're dialoguing interreligiously about how important yours is, and yours is not important. All religions are important given their impact in the world. That's a very different question than whether they're true and whether there is a one true religion which Orthodox Christians believe. They believe that Christianity is true and other religions contain um, some truths, but they also contain some views about Jesus in particular that are false, like that Jesus isn't God, he was, he was just a prophet or something like that. Qualcuno risponda, dove? What, someone respond, where, where would it lead us? The <laughs> distruzione. <laughs> <laughs> Destruction. Yes, it's okay to discuss and to... Tutte le religioni sono un cammino per arrivare a Dio. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sono... That's an important... Dirò una comparazione. Sono come diverse lingue, diverse idiomi per arrivare lì. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. E come Dio è Dio per tutti, noi siamo tutti figli di Dio. And if God is God for all, then we're all sons and daughters of God. Ma il mio Dio è più importante del tuo. But my God is more important than your God. Is that true? 
e noi sono idiomi, cammino, lingue per arrivare a Dio. There's only one God and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. Qualcuno è schi, qualcuno è musulmano, qualcuno è indi, qualcuno è cristiano, Indo, ma Christian. sono diversi cammini. There, there are different paths. Understood? <laughs> okay, as you can tell the audience, the people on the stage, the young people, really like that, of course, because they're from different faith traditions. And to hear that, wow, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, they're all different languages that are all speaking about the same God. And not only that, but you can go through any of these religions and reach that same God. So the religions are referring to the same God with their doctrines and what they believe. And you can actually just stay within your religion and also reach God, come to full knowledge of God, come to a, a relationship with God, and so on. That's pretty controversial, and we'll see why as we progress here. Now, it is worth mentioning, as Mike Winger did in his video, that the, the translations sort of, sort of shifted. So we have the original translation, which you just heard. The translator was on the fly translating what the Pope was saying, and he said, because every religion is a way to arrive at God, there's only one God, and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to arrive at God. Hear that? And then the Vatican first released a transcript in this, this language. Religions are seen as past trying to reach God. Okay, now that is very different. It's very different to say, I can try to arrive at Home Depot, or this is a way for me to arrive at Home Depot. A way to try doesn't imply that I, it's a way that will get me there. Uh, this is a way I can try to get to Home Depot, but I won't necessarily get there. Or this is a way to actually get there. So those are two very different things. And then once it was pointed out, as Mike Winger discusses that, hey, there's a, there's a real discrepancy here between what he actually said and what's being uh, put forward by the Vatican, they changed it to... All religions are paths to God. And that's the quote that I had there. This became the official statement. There's only one God, and religions are like languages, paths to reach God. And that's, that's, very, much, that's very much in line with uh, that religion is a way to arrive at God. Paths to God, ways to arrive at God. But I think the Vatican was really onto something with the first translation, Namely, that it really it is important that the other religions are trying to reach God, but short of the gospel, short of going through Jesus, they don't actually get there. So, we'll, we'll unpack that as we go. Now, one thing it's important to note, and I thank my friend uh, Brian Wood for pointing this out, my Catholic friend, he, there's a difference in the, second, the Catechism of the Second Vatican that um, makes an important distinction. As it says in, in Article 843, the Catholic Church recognizes in other religions that search among the shadows and images for the God who is unknown yet near since he gives life and breath and all things and all wants and, and all things and wants all men to be saved. Thus, the Church considers all goodness and truth found in these religions as, and here's the key, a preparation for the gospel and given by him who enlightens all men that they may at length have life. A preparation for the gospel where if you embrace the gospel, you have length of life, not only on you have a good life on earth, but also you continue on in the afterlife because you know God. You've accepted who Jesus is, the gospel, the good news, and because of that faith you have in Jesus, therefore, you, are, you really know God. You are made right with God, and you know God. Now, the gospel, what is the gospel, according to Catholics? This is important. So, as I just mentioned there, 
as you can see there, a preparation for the gospel. Well, what is the gospel? Where here I found a really helpful quote from Bishop Robert Barron, who I love. He, he has many great sermons online. He's a super fascinating guy. He's very out there in the public sphere and especially online. And he says the following in, in an article he published in 2015, quote, As the God-man, Jesus represents and affects the deification of humanity. Jesus is God's final and definitive rescuing of the human project. As the church fathers put it over and over again, Dus fit homo ut homo feriat dus. You have to pardon me. <laughs> God became human that humans might become God. We're broken in such a way that we can't fix ourselves, and hence we are compelled to sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Therefore, we rely upon, we accept through faith, what God alone can do for us. Accordingly, the Council of Trent teaches, we're going to talk about Trent in a minute, not Trent, but Council of Trent, <laughs> teaches that faith is the, I won't try that again, the origin and root of all justification. My Latin's a little, a little rusty. So what is the gospel? Here he summarizes it. God became one of us, the incarnation, Jesus incarnated, that we might become participants in his life. So one important thing to note there is that phrase, Jesus is God's final and definitive rescuing of the human project. Now this is very much in line with what we saw in 843. Other religions can have truths, they can prepare us for the gospel, given those truths. But are they really a path that will allow us to arrive at God? It doesn't seem like Catholic theology holds that that is true. They're a way to capture some truth that can prepare you for the truth, which is the good news of Jesus, but it won't necessarily get you to that destination unless you accept or go through the good news. That's the important point, and that's where the Pope seems, seems to be deviating. Now here, I mentioned the Council of Trent. Let's go ahead and look at justification according to that council, as summarized in the book by Morgan and Schreiner, Salvation. Justification is not a declaration of righteousness, but an infusion of God's grace. God's grace enables us to be justified from righteousness inherent in us that is the same, the justice of God, because that it is infused into us of God through the merit of Christ. It has to go through the merit of Christ, the work Christ has done, pays for and secures our righteousness before God, Further, justification does not involve the forgiveness of sin alone, but also the sanctification and renewal of the inward man. Now, that's going to be a very different thing than, than Protestants. As Protestants, we be, believe justification is for the forgiveness of sin alone, and then we believe that sanctification is once you have that, then God works with you and you become sanctified over over the course of your life, um, but the act of justification is just the imputing of righteousness. Now, that's for Protestants. Catholics extend that. They have a wider view of justification, but ultimately still, what makes us Christians, Protestants and Catholics, we believe that Jesus's work on the cross was final. It paid the penalty for sin. That's important, regardless of, of the extra details, right? And all pass to righteousness and right standing before God and true knowledge of God ultimately must go through the cross. Now, the Catechism of the Catholic Church in 1992 adopted the same thing as the Council of Trent. That is, they, they embraced what the Council of Trent said about justification. So here's another quote. Justification has been merited for us by the passion of Christ, who offered himself on the cross as a living victim, 
holy and pleasing to God, and whose blood has become the instrument of atonement for the sins of all men. So Christ's work on the cross is the instrument by which we are made right with God. Justification is conferred in baptism, so now Catholics add that, the sacrament of faith. It conforms us to the righteousness of God, who makes us inwardly just by the power of his mercy. Its purpose is the glory of God and of Christ and the gift of eternal life. So, as you can see there, the Catechism of 1992 was very much in line with the Council of Trent concerning justification. So it's not like in, in Catholic theology proper, we see a major deviation from everything, ultimately justification and being made right with God, really coming to know the one true God, going through the cross, going through Jesus, the gospel, the good news, and accepting that, and as a result, being made right with God and really knowing God. Let's continue. So, this is kind of a summary. Catholicism affirms that the truths of other religions can prepare one for the good news. The good news centers on Jesus as, quote, God's final and definitive rescuing of the human project. Justification is merited to us through Christ, through his atoning work for our sins. The purpose of justification is, quote, the glory of God and of Christ and of the gift of eternal life. Thus, here's the conclusion I reach from all of that. Catholicism holds all paths to God must go through Christ if they are to arrive at God. Now, the Pope left this out in the context, to be ch as charitable as we possibly can, in the context, he's talking to, he wasn't in that moment trying to evangelize, right? Um, so in that moment, he was trying to just sow peace. He was trying to show that this is good, what you're doing. And in fact, he goes so far as to say, it's not good to say my religion is better than yours or mine is true, yours is not. And it's true, that won't get you very far in any religious dialogue. But the problem is, what the Pope says has massive weight. And it can either sow clarity or can sow confusion. And clearly, given the reaction online and elsewhere, the Pope's comments have sown confusion. Now, in the moment, you can see the kids are like, wow, this is great. And, and so the, the, the original audience that he's talking to thought it was awesome that, hey, all paths can lead to God, all religions can lead to God. Um, you don't just have to be a Christian in order to, to know God. Um, but the key is he should have clarified, even to those kids, that Christianity does have a unique view of what is required to fully know God and to be made right with him. But that is a separate issue. He could have he could have just said something like that, but he didn't. He could have said, you know, all paths can prepare you for God or or prepare you for the gospel. But as Christians, he is the leader. Like people are are not expecting you to to bend to to just appease other religions, right? Like who are you as the leader of the Catholic Church? He can still see, he could have still said, and that preparation prepares you for the gospel, and here's the gospel. Or I won't go into the good news about Jesus right now, but just know that we view it as a preparation. But we don't need to get into the gospel when we're just having a religious dialogue. We can just discuss and find common ground. But he didn't say that, and that's why there's a lot of confusion. Now, what is this difference between religious exclusivism versus pluralism? So, Catholic theology pretty clearly endorses what's called religious exclusivism. All paths to God must ultimately go through Jesus to arrive at God. If you stop short of Jesus, even if your religion has a lot of truths and gets you pretty far, if you don't eventually go through Jesus, you don't actually get 
to God because you aren't made right with God. Your sins are still upon you. God's wrath is still rightfully poured out on you. And this involves faith in Jesus as understood by Orthodox Christianity. Jesus, here's the key, as illuminated in Christianity, is the only way to God, is the only way ultimately to arrive at a right knowledge and uh, salvation with God. Now, we can contrast that with pluralism, which is what the Pope seems to be dipping his toe into or outright endorsing. There are many paths to God, given God can't be fully known, and this is a quote from the excellent book Debating Christian Theism, where Paul Kittner endorses the idea that there are many paths to God. So he says the following, it follows with both logical and theological necessity that there cannot be only one way to know God. Why? Because there's always more to know about God. To hold to only one way is to close oneself to knowing more of the depths of divine truth. There can be no only one or final truth. Now that contrast, remember, Christ is the final truth, right? With what Bishop Barron said about the gospel. No one truth can say it all. If any truth says it does, it is probably an idol, a finite something that sets itself up as the everything, everything of God, end quote. So religious pluralism says there are, because God is so vast and incomprehensible in his totality, there's always more we can know, and various religions can provide that. And so there are many ways of knowing God, there are many paths to God, and so on. Now let's take a look at what philosopher John Hick has to say. Now the really interesting thing is that John Hick is actually a religious pluralist, but he admits that if Orthodox Christianity is true, religious exclusivism follows. You should, if you're an Orthodox Christian, be an exclusivist. So let's, let's see how he, he unpacks this. Quote, Traditional orthodoxy says that Jesus of Nazareth was God incarnate, that is, God the Son, the second person of a divine trinity, incarnate, who became a man to die for the sins of the world and who founded the church to proclaim this to the ends of the earth so that all who sincerely take Jesus as their Lord and Savior are justified by his atoning death and will inherit eternal life. It follows from this that Christianity, alone among the world religions, was founded by God in person. So, are all paths equally uh, equal paths to God if you're a Christian? No. Actually, given the incarnation that God became man and then took on the sins of the world and paid the penalty for our sins, given that, that's unique to Christianity, um, then it was founded by God in person. So Christianity is unique. And, and that's important to note. It is important to celebrate the ways that we have commonality, especially when we're in, engaged in an interreligious dialogue, but we can never lose sight of the fact that Christianity itself has baked into it an exclusivist claim that Jesus came down to earth, paid the penalty for our sins by having faith in him, we can inherit eternal life and come to know and live with God fully in the afterlife. God came down from heaven to earth and launched the salvific movement that came to be known as Christianity. From this premise, it seems obvious that God must wish all human beings to enter this new stream of saved life so that Christianity shall supersede all the world's faiths, all, all the world faiths, Christianity alone, in this view, is God's own religion, offering a fullness of life that no other tradition can provide. It is therefore divinely intended for all men and women without exception. So here you have a famous philosopher of religion, John Hick, who himself became a pluralist, very much recognizing that if you embrace Orthodox Christianity, 
that you will be committed to exclusivist claims. Now, should the Pope have mentioned this claim? Well, I think he, I think he owed it to all the Catholics and all the Christians writ large to not confuse things. It's, it's one thing to say in that moment that, yes, it's, you don't want to start bickering and saying that our religion is true, our religion is better, but at the same time, Christianity does have an exclusivist claim. It is unique among the world's religions. And here's why. Now, so he could have just said that and then just continued on so that we're not, we're not left with this just pluralist claim. But let's continue on. So here's, here's, here's what's really interesting. So here's Pope Francis's comments about... Um, again, uh, about this. So I'll just highlight one, one thing. Um, that is correct. All religions are passed to God. Then he uses an analogy. There's different language that express the divine, um, but God is for everyone, and therefore we're all gods. But my God is more important than yours. There's only one God, and religions are like languages, paths trying to reach God. Some Sikh, some Muslim, some Hindu, some Christian. Understood. Now, we as Christians do believe, we're monotheistic, just like Islam and Judaism. We do believe that there's only one God. Hinduism differs from that. But, but it doesn't mean that if you are a, a Muslim, for instance, that the Christian must claim that your understanding of Christ is referring to the same God. Well, first of all, as Christians, we embrace the Trinity, right? So that's, that's a huge difference from, uh, from Islam. But also, uh, we believe that there are things that are contradictory re regarding how they view the nature of Jesus that are false, and they don't actually latch on. They don't refer to the same God. So it's not like you can have a, a, a language that is speaking falsely about something and yet also attaching to the same referent. He's using this language metaphor, like if we just have different languages, we can all express, we can all express the same things and ultimately uh, latch on to the same one true God. But that's false because those religions have conflicting claims about the core issue of Christianity. Namely, was Jesus God? Did he incarnate? Did he pay the penalty for our sins? And so on. Now, Pope doubles down four days later. Wow. So this is important. And this is actually something that Trent Horn failed to mention in his video on these comets. Now, Trent, to his credit of the YouTube channel Council of Trent, he did actually, I think, uh, fairly express concern. Also, reason and theology. He did a great job as well in addressing this issue. But this, this, and, and he, reason and theology, he actually talks about this four days later. So instead of the Vatican or the Pope coming out and saying, look, I was talking to children within the context of interreligious dialogue. I, I wasn't in that moment trying to evangelize, so there was no need to mention the fact that we are religious exclusivists and ultimately believe there's one path ultimately to reach God through the gospel, through Jesus. But I just want to let you know that I'm still, I'm still, a, I still believe Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and um, all must go through Jesus in order to reach God ultimately. But in that moment, I was speaking loosely. Anyway, I'm just making this up, but I'm just showing you like the Pope could have come out a day after, four days later, given all the upstir, the stir up that it caused, the dust up it caused. But instead, we get this quote. I invite you to learn together to discern the signs of the times. Contemplate the difference of your traditions like a richness, a richness God wants to be. Unity is not uniformity, and the diversity of your culture and religious identities is a gift from God. Unity in diversity. Let mutualist theme grow among you, following the witness of your forefathers. So, 
not only does he not clarify his comments, but he says that all these different religions are a gift from God. I mean, it's one thing to say this is the way humanity is played out. Different religions have been born, and they they're, they're have parts that are very beautiful and true, and we should celebrate those things. But ultimately, we believe God came to earth, and there is a beauty and a truth to Christianity that isn't found in those other religions. Instead, he just says, look, all this religious diversity is a gift from God, which seems to reinforce the fact that you can be in any of these religions and they're all passed to God. Now, in fairness, back in, 2000, in 2016 and, and a while ago, Pope, Pope, he, the Pope did say things that suggest exclusivism. So he said of things that suggest that Jesus is the way. Um, so here's a quote from the Catholic News Agency about his comments. Pope Francis on Monday urged the faithful not to seek salvation through anyone but Jesus alone because he is the only way into heaven. There's the exclusivist claim. Pope Francis has embraced exclusivism in the past. The Lord thus clearly says you cannot enter eternal life by any entryway that is not the door that is not Jesus. He is the door of our life and not only of eternal life, but also of our daily life. So Jesus is the way to get to God. And he continues, rather, Jesus shows us the way for, forward. There is no other who can show us the way. So Jesus is the light to God. Jesus is God, but Jesus also shows us the way to God through what he's done. The Pope cited Jesus' warning against following those who claim to have the way of the Messiah. Do not listen. Do not hear them. I am the way. Jesus says, I am the way. Now, Jesus is also the truth. In 2018, Pope Francis endorsed this, quote, The truth finds its full realization in the person of Jesus himself. In his way of living and dying, the fruit of his relationship with the Father, the Holy Father explained, this existence as children of God, he, risen, gives it also to us by sending the Holy Spirit, who is spirit of truth, who attests to our heart that God is our Father. Now, other religions aren't going to have this Holy Spirit as understood by Christians, right? And the Holy Spirit is the seal, confirms our, our faith and and. Is, is ultimately the truth, guides us to all truth, right? And not only that, but Pope Francis says Jesus is the life. Quote, if we do not make decisions in the name of Jesus, who is the door, we attempt to do so through a smuggler's hatch, a false sort of back door. We're trying to get into God, but without going through the front door, which is Jesus. He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but who tries to enter another way is a thief and a robber, he said. There is no other door than Christ. Jesus said the only entrance was through the gate of the sheep pen. On the path of life, the life of every day, we need only follow Jesus, the shepherd, and we will never be misled, the Pope said. Those who follow Jesus do not err. So here we have the Pope going back six years, eight years, very much, uh, you know, making it clear that there's only one way to God. He, he's very clearly expressing exclusivism. So Jesus, as you know, is the way to the Father. So Thomas said, this is from John 4, 14, 5 to 6. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. There's no path to God except through me. That's why the Catechism 843 talks about preparation for the gospel. The path ultimately must go through Jesus. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. So really coming to know God requires knowing Jesus. From now on, you do not know him, uh, you do know him and have seen him. 
You've seen him in the flesh, incarnated, right? So Jesus is the way. And this was very much what Pope Francis was endorsing with those uh, string of, of quotes, right? He, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But things, I don't know if things have changed. I have some thoughts about that. But here's the problem. Let's kind of break this down. So Francis is affirming in his recent comments, P, Jesus is, or sorry, he's, he's affirming in the past, P, Proposition P, Jesus is the only path to God as he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through him, right? So that's in the past. Francis has affirmed exclusivism. Yet, Francis is also embracing and not clarifying comments that suggest religious pluralism. Not P, there are many paths to God. And then here we have that second, that second statement four days later, and this is a gift from God. This diversity is ultimately a gift from God. So Francis is affirming contradictory statements which sows confusion and false security in false religions. This is the big miss, right? The head of the Catholic Church missed an opportunity to share the good news. Um, and you might say, well, that's not the time for it. Well, as I said earlier, he could have mentioned the good news of Jesus, and then just not really gone into it much, but at least sown a seed uh, for, for these other religions. Instead, what he is sowing, and you see people clapping, like the, the guy on the stage clapping, because he's like, my religion could get to God too. Um, and, but ultimately, that's a false security in a false religion, a religion that ultimately will not get you to God. And that's it might sound harsh, but that is the truth. If you take Christianity seriously, Orthodox Christianity seriously, that's, the, that's what you're led to. Jesus is unique amongst all other religions and amongst all other false gods. Jesus is the one true God. He is the truth, and all paths to God must go through him. Now, uh, my friend Tyler McNabb, offers a resolution, which is very interesting. Is there a way we can make sense of uh, sort of these, you know, Francis affirming P and not P? Jesus is the only path to God, and there are many paths to God, not necessarily going through Jesus. Well, um, in his Furthering Christendom substack, Tyler McNabb says the following, quote, the great religions can all have the same reference. So he's denying what I said earlier. And insofar as there is a sense in which Christ is in other traditions, these other traditions de facto enable people to come to Christ. That is, the truths which Christ reveals in other religions act as connectors to the church. So those who, through no fault of their own, don't explicitly know Christ can, by believing the truths that are possessed, be connected to Christ and his church, which saves them. They are saved by their implicit faith. So they, if you were to ask them, do you, do you believe in Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life? They'd say no, but implicitly they have faith because they believe certain truths that are connected to the Catholic Church, the truths espoused by the Catholic Church. And therefore, this implicit faith is enough to save them because after all, through no fault of their own, they didn't know that uh, they have to believe in Christ or, or they weren't presented with the gospel or, or you know, they were just never witnessed to and they, they didn't know they had to believe in Jesus. He was the one true, true God. Nonetheless, since these religions contain these connectors, they de facto enable a path to God. So you do have paths to God through these lowercase truths that can ultimately reach the uppercase truth, that is uh, Christ in the Catholic Church. And so they, they are past to God. There are connectors. Now, I have several worries about this approach. I think it, it, does, re, it does resolve the, the contradiction because it can be true that there are many paths to God and it can be true that Jesus is the ultimate way. The paths actually do lead you to the one true God, and, and it all must go through the Catholic Church for the, for the Catholics. And Jesus, although they allow their, some Protestants are saved and so on, I won't get into that, 
But um, there are some worries I have, though. I, I don't think the implicit move, a faith move works. The great religions can all have the same referent. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the great religions don't have the same referent when it comes to Jesus. And again, Christianity is unique because of what we believe Jesus has done in terms of his life, death, and resurrection. Who Jesus is in relation to God the Father has a different meaning in the mouth of a Muslim, Jew, Hindu, or Buddhist. Such difference, differences, often con different contradictory meanings, do not refer to the same Jesus in, in the sense relevant to knowing and communing with God the Father. So because there's error in the understanding of Jesus, those sentences, those languages, don't ultimately latch on to God. They don't have the same reference. Now, he says the truths which Christ reveal in other religion act as connectors to the church. Well, the truths found in other religions may have a connection to the church because Jesus is the truth. But if those religions don't recognize Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, those truths will not capture the capital T truth of the good news of what Christ has done such that salvation is secured. So those truths, those supposed connectors, are false bridges to nowhere. Those truths will not lead to a genuine faith in Jesus. They don't ultimately connect. And I don't, I don't think by saying their faith is implicit that that will connect you because faith has to be in Jesus. And after all, they have a very different understanding of Jesus, often contradictory. Was Jesus God? No, he was just a prophet. Was Jesus God? Christianity? Yes, he was God incarnate. And then lastly, he says, those who through no fault of their own do not explicitly know Christ can, by believing the truths that are possessed, be connected to Christ and his church which saves them. Okay, so what I think is Tyler is sort of blurring is the distinction between the unevangelized and the evangelized. And those are going to be very different things, right? So those who, through no fault of their own, don't explicitly know Christ, to my mind, that says that they've never been presented with the gospel. They're the unevangelized. And there's, there's many different views about the fate of the unevangelized. Here's the problem. Tyler is generalizing from the case of the unevangelized to saying that this holds writ large, that even if, like in the United States, even most Muslims are going to know something about Christianity, perhaps even been witnessed to by various different, different uh, denominations or even Catholics. And so in that sense, they're not without fault, right? And they don't believe in Jesus. And so... I don't think we can generalize from the fate of the unevangelized to include both the evangelized and then say that, hey, all paths uh, uh, can reach God because look at this one case of the unevangelized. Wouldn't God have mercy and provide them a connector to the church? Wouldn't that implicit faith be enough to get them there? After all, it's not their fault they don't know about Christ, right? But we're talking about the whole thing. We're talking about unevangelized and, and evangelized, and we might say the unevangelized is a special case that shouldn't be the norm. And there are ways of dealing with that in terms of what God, how God would save them and what God would do, um, but that doesn't also apply to the evangelized or those who should have known better because they had been witnessed to or they just didn't, didn't inquire, so they were, they were culpably ignorant of Christ. There's many different cases. So the fate of the unevangelized shouldn't be generalized as a norm for all of salvation, such that all religions which contain contradictory claims about Jesus still have truths securing implicit faith. I don't think they have implicit faith. Though McNabb's implicit faith moves avoid the contradiction, as all paths lead to God through implicit faith in Jesus, and Jesus is still the only way to God, I do not think it works nor is it the most natural reading of the Pope's claims. So here's, here's where I think the rubber meets the road. Here's just, again, I can't get inside the Pope's brain, but if I had to give a reading of what the Pope is doing that I think 
sort of most natural, I would say, here's what I would say, the Pope's views have shifted in a more liberal direction. And by that, I mean theologically liberal. Yet they do not represent Catholic orthodoxy. When the Pope speaks off the cuff, he tailors his message to his audience and says heterox things at odds with the norms of Catholic theology. Now, this sits well with the audience he's addressing. Remember, they're clapping. Yes, this message is, is great for, for what, what I'm hearing, but it sows confusion about the core Catholic commitments, and it's possible, possible his views now stand in opposition to canonical Catholic teachings. And this idea came in discussion again with my Catholic friend, Brian Wood. This idea came to me. So uh, Brian very clearly said that Pope often says heterox things, especially when he's speaking off the cuff. And um, I think actually we're seeing back in 2018 and 16 comments that are very much exclusivist. But now, for whatever reason, and maybe because he thinks this is what the world needs now, or something like that. And I know he's more theologically liberal in general, but he seems to have shifted even more in an ex in a pluralist direction. And that, if I was a Catholic, that would be genuinely concerning. So I hope this video has been helpful for both my Catholic brothers and sisters and also for Protestants to think through how to dialogue with their Catholic friends who are wrestling with this. Um, because I do think it's troubling, because ultimately we are Christians. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, we believe in Jesus. We believe in the Trinity. We believe in Jesus. And that's the core thing. And that about that core thing, not some peripheral thing to the faith, about that core thing, it appears the Pope's comments are sowing confusion. So I hope he clarifies things, and I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you.